Good evening, welcome to town meeting. I call this meeting to order. I would like to introduce Dave Douglas, chairman of the select board. Thank you, Randy. Good evening. Tonight's a combination of the uh, efforts that have gone on putting together the fiscal year 23 budget, which began in February of this year, 2022. The budget is a process of seven, seven public meetings, it began with each town department presenting their budgets to the finance committee and the select board and taking questions. Following each of the department presentations, the select board and the finance committee broke apart for individual deliberations, as we always have. And then we come back together for a meeting to see if we can reconcile our beliefs and our thoughts on the upcoming budget. As we've done that and moved it forward to this evening, the staff held a meeting last week for any members of the public that wanted to come in and have, since they had received their warrant, if they wanted to come in and have further explanations and understand um, maybe a particular item, the staff of each department was present, though no members of the public showed up. Since 2020, the budget, town budget has remained relatively flat. In fact, the net commitment decreased in fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22. In an effort to mitigate economic hardship during the pandemic, this year we were faced with certain economic challenges associated with inflation, supply chain issues, and we're positioning the town to ensure we continue to provide excellent service to our community. For the upcoming 23 budget, the primary drivers are inflation and energy prices, as we all know in our individual communities. Inflation is approximately 8%. Utilities have an increase of 15 to 20% and continue to rise. The ability to be flexible and keeping the net commitment stable. We have focused efforts on reducing the town's debt, maintaining our current infrastructure, and ensuring our equipment and vehicles are replaced responsibly and pursuing options to save on energy costs, whether it be solar or LED street lights. Debt service. In November of this year, two of the town's remaining four bonds become tolerable. This budget includes paying off two of these bonds early, which will decrease the town's debt service by 83%. This will save the town approximately $130,000 in interest and provide flexibility in the budget over the next four years. Capital, due to the availability of equipment, vehicles, and related components, we've established a vehicle equipment capital accounts for fire, EMS, police, and public works. These departments have prioritized purchases within their, within their respective accounts. But these accounts will allow some flexibility with inflation and product availability. For example, the public works loader, if the public works loader is not available during the year, and based on the priority and price, the next piece of equipment may be purchased. This is something different than we've done in the past, and we can speak to this as we come to the issues. Finally, the select board remains, and finally, with those purchases, the select board remains the final approval of that process. That's the, the town in a nutshell, and we're going to move on. I will now read the invitation. We are gathered here together in civil assembly. We gather as a community in the oldest sense of the word. We gather together to try and make decisions about what we think is right and about what we think is wrong. Let us advocate for our positions, but never at the expense of others. Let us remember that there is an immense gap between saying, I think I am right and I am right. Let us always remember that our neighbors with whom we might disagree at town meeting are the people with hopes and dreams as true and as high as our own. Let us not forget the citizens who have served our town in the past, as well as those who are serving it today. Most importantly, let us always remember that in the end, caring for each other and our community is of far greater importance than any differences we may have had at this meeting. There it is. 
So I will now read the greeting. You are hereby required in the name of the state of Maine to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of Thompson, qualified, qualified to vote on town affairs, to assemble at the Mount Ararat Middle School, Orion Center, on Wednesday, the 25th of May, 2022, AD at 7 o'clock p.m. in the evening, with a backup date on May 26th, and then and there to act on Articles 1 through 28 to wit. We will now act on Article 1 to elect a moderator to preside at said meeting. Are there any nominations for a moderator? I would like to nominate John Pennington. Is there a second? So, <coughs> Are there any other nominations? Hearing none nominations, we will now conduct a written ballot for moderator. Sorry, I'm not used to the big space in the high school. We were closer together. <laughs> so you have to wait till I come. I now have three ballots and I declare John Cunningham moderator. Please come forward and raise your right hand. Do you, John, swear to support the Constitution of the United States and of this state so long as you shall continue a citizen thereof and will faithfully discharge to the best of your ability the duties incumbent upon you as moderator for the special town meeting? According to the Constitution and the laws of the state of Maine and the ordinances of the town of Thompson. Thank you. Thank you. Now, just need your signature there. It's pretty valuable. <laughs> Don't you wish all elections were that easy? <laughs> There's an obvious bit of formality about what we just did. It uh, goes back to uh, colonial days, actually. And I suppose it's nice to have some customs uh, that stay the same. Uh, New England town meeting is democracy at its plainest and simplest, at its finest and at its worst. Uh, Let's, say, let's hope that uh, this evening we see it mostly at its finest. Uh, and there are a couple of things we can all do to help with that. Uh, one is to remember the purpose of this uh, is to uh, go through the warrant articles and uh, take action upon them and to consider them carefully uh, before going. Uh, <clears throat> if you, with each article, uh, I will ask for a motion first. And I may prompt the wording of the motion if that helps. Uh, but we always put a motion on the table uh, before we start talking about it, based on the old rule that you ought to know what you're talking about before you talk about it. Uh, a rule that is not always followed, I've noticed. Uh, the other thing that's worth bearing in mind is that the, this is a good uh, auditorium, and you can probably hear me reasonably well even without the microphone if I show it. However, the reverse is not true. So if you have a question or a comment, please come to the microphone that is there, uh, as long as it's uh, working and on. Uh, and I'm getting a nod. Uh, so please, if you can, come to the microphone. If it is difficult for you to move from your seat over to the microphone, 
let me know and I'll try to hear you uh, at, with your comment and question, and I'll repeat it if it's fine. Uh, and also, finally, one word about uh, parliamentary procedure. The purpose of parliamentary procedure is not to prove that you studied it. The purpose of parliamentary procedure is to make sure that everybody who wants to say something gets a chance to say it if we can, and yet the business of the group still gets transacted and moves along. That's the purpose of it. So we'll try not to get too hung up on technicalities. Uh, we won't have any. Uh, but as we're moving along, if if it appears if it appears to you that I have missed something, misstated something, uh, said the wrong number, or failed to see you when you had your hand up and wanted to be recognized, call out. Um, make sure that I don't go past you, because that's not my goal. But sometimes, because everybody is spread out. It can be hard to see uh, if somebody's trying to get my attention to speak. And of course, if you want to speak on a certain article, you don't have to wait for me to call on you. Just come down to the microphone, and then I'll know you want to speak, and I'll say your turn. Uh, any questions about any of that before we start? Very well. Uh, first is Article 2. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I have left out procedures uh, for the special uh, town meeting here in Thompson. And before we start considering the warm, uh, I invite all who wish to join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Jim Piper is here. Here we go. Thing and I would like to invite you, if you would care to, to join me in prayer. Gracious Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to come together as a community to lift up the business of this town of Thompson that we all love and call home. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for those that have diligently done the work. Thank you for their insight. Thank you for the hours and hours of dedication that they have provided. And Lord, help us to understand. Father, be with our thoughts, be with our words this evening. Bless this meeting together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jim. Article 2, to see if the town will ratify the change in the date for the special town meeting from May 18, 2022 to May 25, 2022. The backup date of May 26, 2022, due to a change of venue availability. We have a motion to adopt that article. I'll make a motion as read. Thank you. Is there a second? And I heard a second. Does anybody have any comments about this? I hope you don't, because uh, here we are. <laughs> then, uh, those in favor, please raise a hand. Excuse me, not just a hand, the hand with the card in the form of the meeting. And is there anybody opposed? Thank you very much. Article 2 is passed. Article 3 to see if the town will ratify the change to allow the select board by a two thirds majority to waive the interest penalty on property taxes for up to six months beyond the due date. 
during a declared state of emergency within the past six months. So I hear a motion. Make a motion that is read. Thank you. Second. Second. And second. Motions made and seconded to adopt that article as it appears in the warrant. Uh, I suppose to ratify as requested. Are there any comments or questions? Mr. Moderator, I can clarify just in case anyone needs to know what it is. Um, this is a product of the pandemic and the board initially when the pandemic struck in March of 2020 had no ability to, going into March and taxes due in April, we had no ability to change the date of debt taxes due, not knowing what the economy was and such. So as we work through the pandemic, this is something that we brought forward that it gives us the ability if something of that type of state of emergency gets again, we have the ability to waive um, these, these uh, penalties until six months following the end of the state of emergency. So that's just the background on it. So I don't understand. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Are we ready to vote? Those in favor, please raise a comment. Any opposed? The article is approved. And the ratification is given. Article 4, to have the town vote to raise, appropriate, and spend the sum of $3,362,146 for debt service. I'm not going to read the rest of what appears in your one, and I will not be reading the tables uh, as you notice. Uh, is there a motion? I make a motion that we raise three million three hundred sixty-two thousand dollars, one hundred forty-six dollars for debt service. So it's raise appropriate in spend. Thank you. And a second. That article has been moved and seconded to be approved as stated. I mean, as written in the warrant. Are there questions or comments? Yes, please come to the microphone. Yes, please just uh, tell us uh, where you live. It should be your name and where you live. Yeah, Jeanette McNeil, City Center. So I noticed that the payment for the debt service this year is approximately three times the amount it was last year. I wanted to check if I had heard correctly that that will save us $130,000 a year in interest. I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. Correct. Uh, if the the answer Sorry. that came through was that's correct. So there's an interim answer. Was there more to your question? I think no, there was. No, I, I just was curious because I, I don't have an impression, but I guess it's a lot of, it's a three, it's threefold, it's a 300% increase roughly. It's only saving us $130,000. Not that it's not worth saving $130,000. It's okay. I just want to make sure I have Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Very well. Let's vote. Uh, the article is to have the town vote to raise appropriate and spend the stated sum as written in the article. All, of, all in favor? All opposed? The article is passed as written. Article 5. To see what town, to see what sum the town will vote to spend for general government under the following accounts. To see what sum the town will vote to raise and appropriate for the city, and to authorize the select board to transfer funds from municipal insurance to departments outside of general government for anticipated employee wage and benefit adjustments. Is there a motion to? Uh, is there a motion to uh, raise the amount pursuant to the select board recommendation of the board? I make a motion that we move the select board recommendation for million four hundred six nine hundred fifty four dollars. Thank you. Is there a second? Yeah. Yeah. I have a question about two of the categories that are making significant increases this year. Central services number four has a twenty thousand dollar increase in costs, and facilities maintenance a forty nine thousand dollar increase. Can you explain what those are for? 
Yes. Is there anyone? We will have, we are getting it, just we want to be okay. able to complete answer. Give us a second. We're checking the information. We have experience that our uh, rules will be increased. Uh, one of them is dues and memberships for the main municipal association. And one we transfer that from a different account, and that also increased as well. And leases and licenses. Uh, in this line, leases and licenses with incentive services, it covers all of the software, uh, leases and licenses, as well as updates that the town has throughout all the departments. Uh, that increase uh, was somewhat significant. And possibly some of the, um, the uh, I'm sorry, the companies who are responsible for them, uh, they're, suffering, they're feeling the same inflationary pressures as they're going on as well. And those are the primary drivers for our increase. What about the facilities maybe to provide new equipment to be on this kind of way? Or facilities? Why is facilities make this uh, 50, almost 49000 dollars Within facilities, primary drivers behind the increase is heating fuel, water, contracted services. So, those contracted services are basically all the services within the facilities that we have. That includes uh, Periodic or preventive maintenance agreements with each of the companies that serve as our HVAC systems as well as our roofing. Electrical repairs, plumbing repairs, for the primary and electricity. However, the electricity, uh, although the increase in this budget, we are seeing savings uh, that aren't necessarily completely reflected in the issue budget. The second project in our company is sold, our, I'm sorry, our perfect power agreement for solar. Is uh, we're just we're just completed in December, and uh, we're starting to see the uh, energy credit coming into that. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Denise Kepler. I'm the 13 homeless. And um, I just have a question, a thought I'd like to share with the select board about concern. Um, I noticed that our general assistance budget is 8100 and fifteen dollars, um, and it's my understanding that general assistance is generally expended for housing assistance, and we have a statewide housing crisis, and we certainly have people in this area who are unhoused or who need housing assistance from the town. I'm shocked that we're only increasing our budget for that by about a thousand dollars this year when prices for rent in this area have gone up enormously. So I just, I want to express a concern to you that this is possibly for a town of almost 10,000 people, not enough money to cover our general assistance expenses. And uh, if anyone has any comment on that, I'd like to hear it. I realize Ms. Dumont is not here and she is our general assistance manager, but I, I am quite concerned about this small amount of money for a town of this size and given the current housing prices. Thank you. Uh, Linda Dumont, who is our general assistance um, director, came to the board with this budget, and this is what she presented. And basically, it's based on the it's on the on demand. We have not had anybody coming, the, the number of requests and demand for any of these services has not been substantial. And it's also, if I recall, I want to make sure I'm right here, the manager can stop me if I'm wrong, but these are what the cost to the town is. There's a large percentage of this that is reimbursed by the state. I believe it's 70%. So this is this is the town's cost. So it's not, this isn't just the, the sole number, but Linda's reported to us that she has not had the call for service at all. There's a there's a huge demand, and they've been specifically looking for 
things we don't offer in this town. There would be um, small ongoing efficiency motels and such. And she just hasn't, she hasn't had any of that. And, and, it, and I understand what you're saying, but. Yes. Alex Trevor. I was just looking uh, for a contact with me. I have two questions. One I meant to do, has to do with the town census that we mentioned about people. The other one, what is what is our debt to income ratio? We're looking at this warrant, all of these funds, some of them are redundant or let's say repetitive in nature. And well, I guess Article 10 is going to get to the housing issue. So, Sir? so my Sir? questions are if I can, um, uh, how many people the town census and what's our debt to income ratio? Sir, if I can interrupt you, I apologize. By law, we're required to consider the articles on the warrant and nothing else. I'm sure members of the select board might be able to help you answer those questions after the meeting. I think those are relative. Well, they may be, but we're talking about Article 5 right now. Okay. You mentioned Article 10. If there's yeah, something about Article 10 that you'd like to talk about when it comes up. That's yeah, fine. Okay. okay. We, we just have to stick to the agenda for now. Thank you. Other questions or comments about Article 5? If not, we're ready to vote. Those in favor? Those opposed? Article 5 is adopted with the values and numbers set forth in the warrant as the select board recommendation. Article 6 to see what sum the town will vote to spend for the capital projects fund under the following counts and see what sum the town will vote to raise and appropriate for the same. Do I hear a motion to approve the select board recommendations as set forth in the article six? Make a recommendation $1,830,000 as the select board. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Are there comments or questions about article six? Diane Bernasoni, uh, 168 Forbes Lab. Uh, I would like to know what makes up the $565,000 of vehicle replacement. Thank you, Diane. Uh, for a public works, the 565000 uh, The first priority is the plow truck replacement. At two hundred and five thousand dollars, a three-quarter ton dump truck with plow and sander for eighty thousand dollars, a zero-turn mower for fifty thousand, a three-quarter ton plow truck for sixty thousand, and a loader for two hundred and five thousand. Now those are estimates we we received during the budget process and. Uh, the chair of the Facebook board explained why we're having uh, a capital account for this. Uh, prices are changing, but those are our best estimates at this point. And that list I gave you is the primary of the current as it currently stands. Is that loader different from the loader that's down below $205,000? Yes, that loader at $205,000 down below is the solid waste facility. Uh, the difference is, is the types of tires that are on it, and there's some other minor differences. Uh, the way to know I can have to solid waste facility director not speak to that. Is this normal use? Um, are they old vehicles that we're replacing? Or okay, is there a reason for that? Yeah, uh, why don't Mr. Karen speak to that? And I'm solid waste director. Uh, yeah, the 200, our, our loader that we use at the transfer station has loaded uh, wheels. Uh, so that that uh, alone adds to the suspension beating on the track. Our track takes a little more pounding uh, with those tires because we're, we're, we're working with nails and 
metals to you and dental debris all the time. I tell you, this, where most people would check their oil before they got started, we would have to fill the air in the tire. And they don't go there. There's no sense checking the oil. So our tires have been filled. And that adds about 2,000 pounds to each tire. So it's added stress onto the loader. And our loader has been taking quite a beating over the years because uh, we use it every day for everything that we do compost, making our compost, repairing roads, plowing our roads, plowing the facility, uh, loading the compost into people's vehicles. Uh, unfortunately, the, the uh, piece of equipment, we got a good deal when we bought it. And now the uh, parts for availability are becoming difficult. So our last repairs were you know, five, uh, $15,000. Uh, one instance for a, a fuel pump type of setup for it, and uh, at the time it was the only one we were able to find. So our parts are all really getting bad. The tractor is getting worn, but it's still at a point where we can trade it. I was also have this uh, flipping bucket that we were using. That, that's one of the five also includes a plow setup for that loader. So, uh, Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, Uh, Eva from New York, 35 Prospect Street. Um, I was just curious if you could please um, let us know more about the fire and the police vehicles and if you had um, considered hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles for those purchases. Thanks. The police department have been two hybrid cruisers. This is the second year, I believe it's the second year, maybe the third that we've done that. This has been an ongoing program. The service, the fire department is a service truck, which would be also for a skid unit for a brush vehicle and such. That's going to be a gas vehicle. Sorry, was the first going to be another hybrid or no? Excuse me? Was the first vehicle going to be another hybrid or no? Well, the police department I answered were two hybrid cruisers. That was the first one. And then I answered the service truck for the fire department with a skid unit. Will okay, be, so that will be a gas vehicle. That's one. That's one vehicle. It's so you get two for a hundred thousand dollars from the police department? No. Yes. Sorry. Oh, so I'm going to speak to road construction. So I have one question, but before I do the question, I want to say because I think road construction also includes sidewalk. Thank you for the sidewalk on the other side of the road on Main Street as it goes uh, past uh, the, the condos that I used to be in and now there and down here. Thank you very much for that. So again, it's so whoever did that, that's great. Um, also, I was my question is, it's now last year, it was 650,000 and this year it said 650,000. What was the year before and Aren't we supposed to be up in the storm because we don't have enough roads in fix? Is it man? Man, would you tell us your name? Man? Oh, sure, sure, sure. I, I meant to. Sorry, Nancy read about 13 minutes ago. Thank you. Thank you. I can answer uh, Ms. Randolph, hopefully. Uh, if not, uh, Mr. Cox is in the audience. Uh, in uh, Connecticut, uh, that particular year, we didn't come up with a budget yet. Uh, I think we were budgeting paving at about $350,000 uh, at the Buckingham Public Works. Uh, we had a couple of issues the first year in, in that we couldn't find contractors to do the work. Uh, that was a great trade. And then last year, uh, we kept it at $650,000, I believe. And of course, we're in the middle of construction season when the budget is approved and we have to follow up in the spring. Uh, this year, we kept that $650,000 as well. Uh, one bit down with it as far as uh, expenditures, but uh, frankly, uh, we're kind of running into the same issues with getting contractors to help out. Some of that work that was done last year that was contracted out by uh, Mr. Cox and the whole of crews uh, kind of did, did some of that. For this year, um, I'll highlight some areas just so you know. Uh, of course, these can change depending on the availability of contract fees and prices. But uh, we're looking at the Bay Park area, Tiger Lane, Old Nye, Hunter Lane, Moon Drive, Regenda Lane, Silver Road, Adam Lane. We're also looking at putting in an overlay in the Thompson Fair Mall Road area. And that'll make up most of uh, that particular plan. 
Thank you. Are there other questions or comments? If not, we'll take a vote. We're voting on Article 7. The motion is to approve Article 7. Six. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I get jumped ahead in it. I apologize. Article 6. And the motion is to approve Article 6 using uh, the values and numbers set forth as a select board recommendation. So those are the sums and amounts that would be approved if you vote for this motion. Those in favor? Those opposed? Article 6 is adopted with the select board recommendation. Now we move to Article 7. To see what sum the town will vote to spend for public safety under the following accounts, to see what sum the town will vote to raise and appropriate for the same. Is there a motion to approve the select board recommendations? Make a motion to approve the select board recommendation of three million four hundred eleven thousand and six dollars. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Are there questions or comments? Please come to the microphone. Sir, just a moment, sir. Can I move? I know he's the Why don't you cover the microphone, sir, so that everyone can hear? Because I can't hear. I guess I don't speak loud enough. I was asking about Article Six, covering some of the stuff Article Seven is covering. So we got it. I think you'll see that Article 6 deals with capital projects uh, involving some, and it may involve some of the same things. They're also covered in the public safety. Change of words. Okay. okay, yeah. Change of words is important. Other questions or comments about Article 7? Are we ready to vote? Those in favor of adopting Article 7? With the select board recommendations as printed in the morning, uh, having a total amount of three million four hundred eleven thousand and six dollars. All in favor, please raise a hand. Any opposed? Article seven uh, is adopted as stated. Before question, yes, ma'am. Can someone please explain to people what the difference does? From the capital expenditures and the operating budget. So the people we only come here once a year. Please do that, someone. I understand that. Have a seat. Yeah. So capital expenditures are large one-time purchases. And when I say one time, it could be every 15 or 20 years if we're talking about a motor or ladder trucks and such. Um, the line items that we just approved for the fire department, the line item that we approved for the police department, those are those are where salaries are contained, benefits are contained, day-to-day -day items that are used in and around the station, whether it be training, uh, police department, their vests and such will could fall, will fall within their uniforms. So the the line items, although it's although we approved fire department and police department items particular items, this we just approved the day-to-day -day operation of the department. Article 8. To see what sum the town will vote to spend for public works, solid waste, and recycling program under the following accounts. And to see what sum the town will vote to raise and appropriate for the same. And the Public Works Department is authorized to spend funds from this article in support of capital projects. Do we have a motion? I will approve this article using the select board recommendations that have total of $1,916,628. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? By the way, you'll notice I was careful to say the select board recommendation because there is a slight difference in the finance committee recommendation 
And there is an explanatory note over to the left, which you may want to notice. They really do. We can hear you here, but people in the back. Can, any, can anybody hear me? No. Yeah. All right, not sure. Uh, the reason that we requested a higher number of roommates for it as, select, as it requested is because Dennis has issues hiring people, which everybody across the country, the state, the town has a problem. And he's competing with other municipalities in order to get part time drivers for their plow shops and stuff in the winter. And the additional funding is to make this town more competitive with the competition. And we felt that it was important for Dennis to have that ability to have the funding necessary to try and hire people as needed during the winters. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Mr. Moderator, I would like to. Excuse me, you're, you have your name in the Yes, I gave it before the last yes, yes, yes. Denise Kepler, 13 Thank you. Mr. Moderator, I would like to know what the motion on the floor is. Is it to accept the select board's recommendation or to accept the finance? The motion was to accept the select board recommendation. All right, so if people want to accept the finance committee recommendation, they should vote nay or no against the select board recommendation and then it would be possible to take up the finance committee recommendation is that correct that is a way of achieving the result it might be simpler to amend the motion to change it to adopt the finance committee recommendation rather than select board. whichever you feel if anyone feels motivated to do that it's up to you okay can i um, make that a um, motion for an amendment to accept the finance committee recommendation. Rather than the select board. Correct. Yes, I take that as a motion, and I think I heard a second, but could you have that? Thank you. At this point, the motion on the floor is to amend the main motion. The amendment would change the motion to accept the finance committee recommendation rather than the select board uh, recommendation. Are there questions or comments about that motion to amend? Mr. Moderator, I was, uh, I'd like to be able to give both sides of the story before we go and change numbers. The public works director came and asked for an increase in his part-time budget. He came and asked for additional salaries, which we supported. The amount that we have passed supports those salaries. There is no justification with salaries to go to the finance committee number. When you put pen to paper, and you do the math based on the salaries that were requested and the amounts that have been used in the past, the finance committee number does not add up. What adds up is here. I want everyone to understand what this line over the last three years has done. Part-time payroll in 2019-2020, we spent $5,000 in it. The select board still tonight has $13,000 sitting in that account. 2020, 2021, that line used $2,300. Tonight's, tonight's select board number still has $13,000. Year to date, as of February 1st, when these numbers were put out to us, we had spent $1,150 out of the $13,000 that's put forth. Our numbers add up. The Public Works Director requested additional money to give to in salaries, and we support that. But when you do the hourly wage and you do the summertime part-time help, what we have brought forward is what ends up. Thank you. Other comments, questions? All right, we'll vote. And remember, we are at this point, we are only voting on the amendment. The amendment is to change and so instead of approving the select board recommendation we would be have the motion referred to the finance committee recommendation no. and um, based on the information we just received from our chair is it possible to amend back to um why don't you let me explain that just before we vote and before you go back to your seat and drop your card, I don't want you to move. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the question asked is best answered this way. If you are in favor of changing over to adopt the Finance Committee recommendation, then you would vote in favor of this amendment. If you prefer to stick with the selectmen's recommendation, you would vote against this amendment. But we are only voting on the amendment at this time. Is this a question about procedure? Sorry, did I say more? No, I, I was going to ask whether or not the finance committee could respond to the comments. No, we, we finished the comments and nobody had any more. We did not get into the voting. I'm sorry, sir, but I don't agree with you. I don't think that's correct. And I think it's a parliamentary procedure. I have a right to ask for a comment from a member of the finance committee. Yes, ma'am, but once voting has, excuse me, once comments have ended, I ask if there were further comments or questions. You did not come forward, and then you have started to vote. We are now in the process of voting, which I will not interrupt for that for more discussion. However, after the vote on this amendment, is this based on Robert's rules, sir? It's based on the main moderator's handbook, and I'm not sure what the concern is. If if after this vote, we, we will still have the motion on the floor, and more questions and comments will then be in order. And you can come back and ask more questions. Well, sir, I think that you're asking me to interrupt a procedure which I find to be more confusing than if we just do it in order, and then people will certainly have the chance to make more comments and ask more questions. At this point, we're just debating. So I'll ask sir, you, please. Your attitude is rather rude, given that you are a moderator of the town meeting, and I am very disturbed that you before called a member of our town to please sit down when she had just made a comment. And I don't particularly care for your attitude towards myself either. I apologize if my attitude is offended. That's certainly not my intention. I'm simply trying to follow the rules, keep things on an even keel, and follow the procedure that I think will not confuse me. I am not at all saying you can't make comments or ask more questions. I'm just but saying it's did. not appropriate. I couldn't ask for a comment from the finance committee. That was when, never mind, I, I understand you don't agree with me, but we had already, no one had asked any more comments, nobody had asked any more questions. We should start the vote. That's why I don't want to go back into discussion. But after this vote, the main motion will still be on the floor and will be open to more comments and questions. Can't we just move to it? I would prefer before we move to the vote to be allowed the finance committee to make another comment. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Question of procedure, yes. Susan Ray Reeves, 14 Twin Pond Road. <laughs> um, I would just say that this is an important moment. After hearing the information provided by the select board chair, it only seems right before we vote on something so important to hear a little more information, if there is more, from the Finance Committee. It's an important matter, and it wouldn't be needed if we didn't hear the information we just did from the Select Board Chair. If you wouldn't, if you would just indulge us with this information. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You can tell them that they can make another motion after we do the vote. Thank you. I've tried to say that a number of times. After we vote on this amendment, the main motion will still be on the floor. You can ask more questions of either group. You can make comments about this of whatever type you want. I'm not saying you can't make more. I just do not want to interrupt a vote under progress to go back when that's not really allowed under procedure. But you will have the opportunity. So we'll continue with the vote. The vote is on the amendment. The amendment was to change the motion so that we would be considering under Article 8, whatever Article, under Article 8, the 
finance committee recommendation rather than the select board recommendation. So if you are in favor of that amendment to switch to the finance committee recommendation, you would vote in favor of this motion. If you would prefer to stick with the select board recommendation, you would vote against this motion. But in either case, once this motion is decided one way or the other, the main motion, amended or not, will then be on the floor and further motions to amend, further questions, further comments could then be made. So we're voting on the amendment. Those in favor of the amendment, which would switch to the finance committee numbers. Those opposed to the amendment. The amendment fails in passage. The main motion on the floor at this point is the motion to adopt Article 8, approving the select board recommenda recommendations and amounts. Are there comments or concerns? Yes, Ken, in fact, you, you get up first and wait for me. I would like to ask for a comment from the finance committee in, in response to the comment from the My name is Jeanette McNeil, I have two that up. Thank you. Would anyone from the finance committee get a comment? My understanding David Douglas is uh, emphasis on history, but we're not talking history, we are talking future costs, competition, the ability to hire and get the job done with having to really work our people to the bone to try to make this happen. And I do believe that the minor amount that we are asking for for public works is something that they well deserve and should have the ability to do this and Gail Kelly, Gail Kember, Nine Apple Road. My question is if we vote for the finance committee's uh, extra monies and they're not spent, what happens with those funds? Do they go back into general funds? Yeah, any unspent, any unspent funds roll back into the general fund. And just on that note, um, because of the, the situation the town is in, the inability to find help in all departments, we have a very substantial amount that rolls over each year it, back into uh, the funds. Sometimes as high as, you know, we've had, we've had overages of over a million dollars. So, you know, it, it may feel like a small number that we're victoring over, I think, $7,000. We've got a lot of money that we're just not spending. There is no, there is no, when you do the math, giving the pay raise that they're asking for, we have enough money in our, in what we are bringing to the table. It's. Let me read my question to you. Um, I guess I'm still confused as to what the number from the department head brought for. Was it the number that the finance committee is trying to move forward with, or is this the number that the select board is trying to move forward with? I wasn't really clear on following the, we've done the numbers and the hourly rate and, and that. So I, I just didn't know if I could get more clarification. So, sorry. sorry to like beat the dead horse, but I'm still trying to figure it out. I, I understand your question. Does anyone put it fair? In regards to part time, Salaries, part time payroll. It is the public works director came forward with the finance committee's recommendation. Yes, ma'am. Next to wrap up 13 Williams Drive. So, my question is if, in fact, you do need more money, if Dennis, well, public works needs more money, you're saying, at least I heard, that you have funds. That can be used for that. So if that is correct, then I can live with the recommendation. If that is not correct, 
And still we can come back and bring suggestion after that. I think what it's referencing, um, the Public Works is authorized to spend funds from this article to support capital programs. So when we, so I just want to, so when the Public Works Department has a $1.4 million budget, in each of them, to come to that number, there's uh, 60 lines that, that cover things, anywhere from $850 to sewer to, you know, Anything. So Public Works has the ability within that $1.4 million, if they didn't utilize one of the lines for any reason, or they had another full-time employee that left and we had several weeks in between finding another employee because of the hiring process, they have the ability to utilize any of that money within that $1.4 million for this part-time payment. But the goal is to always live by each line. Every department head tries to do that to the best of their ability. But they do have the ability to, if they have an underutilized line, to use that within their day to day operation. Other questions, concerns? If not, everybody to vote. Okay, we're ready to vote. The motion on the floor is to adopt Article 8 using the select board recommendation. Numbers and amounts of purity and correct in the board. Are we clear? Okay. Those in favor, raise a comment. Those opposed. Article 8 is adopted using the select board recommendation. Article 9 is a routine warrant article. Covering a situation that can arise when a town's uh, total tax uh, assessment is greater than a state. Um, I understand that that is a condition that does not apply in the town of Hobson this year. And therefore, no recommendation has been made. And it is instead recommended that we simply uh, do not take up this article or and go by without. Is there any objection to that? Then we'll pass it by and go to Article 10. Article 10, to see if the voters will adopt an ordinance to amend the Thompson zoning ordinance to amend Chapter 225-50, apartment buildings and multifamily developments, to allow an increased density for multifamily units within the mixed-use mixed -use commercial zoning district. Text of the proposed ordinance changes appears in the law. Are there comments or questions? Yes, sir. Um, I think I said, I'm sorry, sir. I've broken my own rule. Before we discuss this, is there a motion to adopt the proposed ordinance changes as printed in the law? Make a motion to pass. Is there a second? There. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, Rob. I'm the Thompson Planning Director. Um, I believe I'm allowed to speak. Is that okay. taken care of? Uh, I'm representing the planning board this evening. I have an past presentation. Uh, I'll do a quick explanation in the next part. This uh, comes about because we all know there's a housing crisis. Stems back to implement part of our 2019 comprehensive plan as well. Plan that called for increased housing density in our growth. Um, it also dates back to the time we ended 2019 when we addressed this particular zone mix, the MEC mix commercial work, the Thompson Farm Mall zone. Can you speak more directly into the microphone? Yes, I'm sorry. That's all right. um, so, this actually goes back to the 2019 town meeting where we brought the MEC uh, issue of housing. And allowing housing within the mix of commercial district, uh, which was restricted prior to that date. Um, what this article achieves is some clarification within that uh, multi family development code 225, uh, chapter 225 50, uh, while increasing the density of housing units to create 
more than the WA has in that district. It is solely focused on that Fox and Fair Mall zone um, and not in any other zone in the town. It's uh, the reason we didn't do a more comprehensive approach is because we are underway with the town wide recode effort, which is looking at zoning in all of the downtown efforts. Thank you, sir. Could I ask that you stay handy just in case anyone wants to ask a question? Are there questions or comments? Hi. So you're saying if this is, has completely to do with the mall, is that what I heard you say? All of this article? I thought multi homes were apartments. The um, so this is an existing code. We're having to just change the density within the mall. Uh, density is the allowable units for acre. So how many units can be built on one acre? Should we get into the microphone? Yes, sir. No one else can hear the questions you're asking. No, but sir, please, we really can't hear unless you go to the mic. Thank you very much. My question was about density, as in you said, number of units per acre. My question was in relation to number of people per unit. Yeah, multi-family could be one, two, three bedroom units. One family per unit. But this is nowhere else in town. There is not a proposed increased density anywhere else in town. This chapter allows for multifamily. If you read the full chapter, it allows this for multifamily. We're not on that. Nancy Randolph, 13 North is Brown. However, I live in a single unit on 0.2 acres. So in Williams Drive. So tell me why we have seen a full acre for four units. Can you do that? Um, so what this will achieve is uh, something that we don't see often in talks to today, which is apartment buildings. Um, there are in this area as well, it's close to you know, focusing uh, denser development of housing units where you can walk to your services. So this is an apartment building that we've driven out to uh, the former Navy base. We'll see some recent development of the apartment units that will get out there. It be similar to that style of building. Thank you. Thank you. He let me make it by Prospect Street. I'm really sorry I didn't look at this map. So I'm having a hard time visualizing if there are any apartment buildings already in this area. Okay. I think I know it's yeah, there's no housing in that zone at all. I just wanted to ask, is there a height limit on the apartment Good question, and I neglected to say that there are other restrictions in zone uh, that control how dense an area can be built up. Uh, there's open space ratios, there's building heights, there's floor area ratios, uh, there's setbacks, and then of course there's constraints to the land itself, screens, wetlands, and whatnot. Other questions or comments? Nancy Chandler, 11 Western Ave. Um, the state has passed a law in order to increase um, public housing, affordable public housing, to encourage towns to make more dense housing development, particularly say in a town like that, where there, there is no extra space to build. And the idea is denser, closer buildings, sharing walls have lower heat costs, have lower footprint, and we can house more people who are unable to get into housing right now. 
we've, we've changed our policies. Thank you. Anyone else? Are we ready to vote? The motion is to approve and adopt the proposed ordinance changes as printed in the warrant set forth in Article 10. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Article 10 is adopted. <coughs> Article 11. To see if the voters will adopt the ordinance to amend the proxy zoning ordinance to amend Chapter 225-60.19.1 point D, solar energy conversion system, conventional scheme, to allow for zero lot line setbacks on one owner multi-parcel internal lot lines. And the particular proposals are to be made, are to be adopted if you so choose, are set forth in the arm. Yes, sir. No, I make the oh, I, I do Article 11 is off the path. Yes, thank you. Um, and I, I should have started off by saying the, the planning board and all of these articles that we see. Uh, uh, we get sorry. Uh, uh, all of these articles began discussions in early fall um, at public workshops throughout, and they wind up being produced in February to have discussions uh, to have public hearings in March and then bring them here. So they've had lengthy public uh, opportunities and discussions about planning. This article actually, and uh, I realized when you read that how horribly worded the warrant article is. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I'll try to summarize this. Um, the planning board has reviewed multiple solar farms within the past couple of years. This is a newer ordinance. What we realized in the review process, um, or in one of the reviews, is dealing with multiple parcels and property setbacks. Um, the solar farm that has to meet those structure setbacks. Uh, it's not just cross property lines, where they have at least multiple. Parcel use. Um, so we're trying to address that by saying on the internal property lines, not the perimeter of the uh, building area, but on the internal property lines, we can stand those with zero lot line setbacks. It's less destructive to the area, it's a uh, more compact building area, uh, and more efficient for the developers as well. Thank you. Other questions or comments about our homework? Yes, sir. I'm straight I'm gonna go. Uh, this winter, talking about the solar panels, since uh, has to do with energy. Since name is forbidden from supply and generating energy, how are we supposed to fund this stuff? In other words, we have to sell our energy and turn around and buy it back. So I've also noticed it's a little higher around these solar farms. So I'm not crazy about those anyway. So I wonder how many people have actually been around. Have you been going to solar farms, say July, August? Thank you. Thank you, sir. I don't think it calls for a response because. The the article is about adjusting the lot setbacks. But if there are other questions or concerns, if we're ready to vote, those in favor of Article 11, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Thank you. Article 11 is adopted. Article 12. See if the voters will adopt an ordinance to amend the Thompson Zoning Ordinance to amend Chapter 225 33 
signs to remove the 10 year sunset clause associated with non conforming signs. Is there a motion to pass this as a period of the law? That would be my motion. Thank you. And a second? Second. Thank you. Any comments or concerns or questions? Any? I think we're ready to vote. All those in favor, please one person. I beg your pardon. Yes, ma'am. Yes, And I should direct my question to the moderator and not to this one comment. But we're losing. Um, so, so, <laughs> sorry, uh, 10 years since that, why are we getting rid of something? Because if you have an ordinance, we should make everything not, not conforming. Are we going to change the ordinance so that the things that are not conforming are conforming? Good question, and I should have summarized this at the beginning, so I apologize. Um, <clears throat> so, 10 years ago, there was a clause put in the ordinance to uh, have a sunset on all digital signs uh, and force their removal, I'm sorry, on all non conforming signs. Um, that was one of my confusing points. I thought this just dealt with the electric. Sorry. Oops. Microphones. Oh, uh, that is better. I apologize. Um, one of the uh, misconceptions I had even with this ordinance was that it was directed strictly to electronic message centers, and it's not. It's uh, every non conforming size whether it's conventional or any other requirement of that sign that is non-conforming would have to be removed. We don't know how many signs that would be in town. Um, removing this 10-year sunset, simply the electronic message centers that exist today would remain non-conforming. And when a business changes or they need to upgrade their sign, those signs go away. So the 10 year sunset was seeming like it was a bit draconian to do versus just have them expire when they were going to change as any other non conforming. Please correct me if I'm mistaken, but I thought what I read was that the non conforming signs were remaining in use, even if the business changed hands, as long as that business changed hands within a two year period of the old business ending and the new business starting. So I don't think, as far as I can tell from what I read, they do not go away. They actually stay. Please correct me if I'm mistaken. I will try. Um, come up with a better job me and explain it. So, any change to a sign uh, is written in our non conformity section. So, section F non conformities um, details how that change occurred. Um, So that includes changes made to braces, poles, or any portion of the system used to fix the sign, uh, changes to the structure utilizing the non conforming sign. So once those things happen, then they lose their non conforming um, status, if you will. So if a business changes and changes their sign structurally, then that would be. They don't get to retain that. They don't have grandfather status. Jeanette and DOT looks at in section F three A. It says that. Non conforming signs may be retained and maintained um, if no later than two years following the close of a business, the use is a non conforming sign. 
a new business occupies the building before the period that period ends. So if a business is sold, and mm -hmm. two years after that, a new business comes in and adopts the same building and the sign, then the sign will stay in place. Sir, sir, if I could, I just want to point out that the section uh, the lady just was talking about, F3A, if I understood you properly, no proposed change uh, is offered with respect to that. That's how the ordinance reads today, no matter what we vote tonight. That, that's something that's just part of the ordinance. What we're voting on are the proposed changes, which appear in section F, uh, excuse me, subsection 3E, and under exemptions under section 5. The other things that you see there are just the way the code reads now, which is not up for changing tonight. If that happens, I hope. I think it does, but I'll, I'll just clarify to you. So if a business comes in and they could use the, the existing electronic message center, but if they choose to upgrade a new electronic message center, that will not be. I Liz Armstrong, 41 Elm Street. So simply put, I would like to know, Mr. Moderator, are we making this ordinance more strict by making these amendments or are we relaxing it? Our objective is to ultimately have the eventual elimination of non compliance Let me offer you two answers. The second one coming from this gentleman will can tell you about the effect of the ordinance. What I can tell you about is what's being proposed for you to vote on tonight. What's being pro proposed to vote is do you or do you not want to approve the changes to section F3E and, sub and subsection five are exceptions. Those are the only changes being proposed. None of the rest of that is up for approval. For changing tonight, that's just part of the ordinance. Now, whether these changes would help things be more or less lenient or harsh, you can answer that. Sir. Yeah, they, this discussion came up with the planning board discussions and a uh, little long debates. Um, the planning board felt that having the signs go away naturally, sorry, um, having the signs go away naturally occurring when businesses change when the non-conformity when they come in for the sun department to the code officer non you can't give a permit to a non-conforming sun so instead of dictating that 10 years following the adoption of this ordinance uh, it would just be the business of the signs coming for a permit to get reviewed on this ordinance if they you can't issue a non that makes sense. Naturally occurring non conformities go away. This would, this language, and I will say we don't know how many non conforming signs exist in town based on the language of the It's not that we can. So it seems to me that I understand the natural occurring. Uh, but it seems to me that E is sort of a great backstop that says no later than 10 years after the adoption of this. Then you know, you're going to be non and you have to come out, right? That right, Mr. Monterey? I, I can't comment on any of I have to ask you the question. I, 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 thank you very much. Yes, sir, if you can respond, please do. That's correct. The town is now asking to remove that 10 year. Mandatory removals, non conforming signs. Um, Liz Armstrong, 41 Elm Street. I'd like to make a motion to amend this article to read, uh, ins to insert E back in. I'd like a hard stop for non conforming signs after 10 years. Yeah. Uh, thank you, but unfortunately, we can't do that. <laughs> 
and don't jump in too fast. We can vote for or against this proposal. Changes to the ordinances have to go through a legal process of public hearings and votes before they reach this level. This is not the place where ordinances can be rewritten. Okay. So the choice tonight is, do you want to adopt this or not? I, I understand, sorry about that. That's I, okay. I would like to urge my compatriots here tonight to stick with the ordinance the way that it is and to create a hard stop and turn on, on the signs to conform with the overall goal, which is the eventual elimination of non-conforming signs, which is our town objective. Thank you. I would like to understand the purpose of this. What instigated it? Why is it all of a sudden an issue? What are we not seeing? Um, this was a discussion at the planning board. Uh, proposed this 10 years ago. Many of those board members were around at that time. Um, it was brought um, from the code officer asking if this is something that they support. Because to have signs go away naturally when business is changing, when someone wants to buy a new sign for their uh, business. Um, so that's how this came to be to, to have a different discussion about letting signs that are not in the form of go away when there's changes made to those signs versus forcing having the code officer right away after every business that has a non conforming sign telling them to remove their sign. And come in for a new sign. So that was the discussion. I was Thank you. Are there other questions, comments, or concerns? Mr. Moderator? Yeah. I would encourage everybody to pass this this evening as written. The reason 10 years ago this was written and there was no understanding of what would have happened 10 years from that date. At this time, with this, this magic 10 year number, we could have passed eight, we could have passed 12, but we didn't, we chose 10. We had no idea what conditions our businesses would have been put through in the last couple of years. And I don't know if that's what's gone behind any of this discussion and why, but to simply go and ask a business at this time that we thought was perfectly capable for the last 10 years to invest in it at this time. I think is very unfriendly from this town. And I would support that we continue on because if they make any changes, they've got to update their sign coming. I mean, it, it details here the small in the smallest of changes. They need to make these changes. So I, I just think that as a community, if we start to enforce this on our business, we don't know how many the, the planning board direct the planning directors are. Um, stated, we have no idea how many this is. And I got to imagine it's a larger number than, than a small one. So I would encourage that we allow this to move forward, removing the 10 year sunset. And as no normal changes come about, we take care of it that way. Yes, would urge you to defeat this. Um, there was a good reason for the sunset. What concerns me is there is no survey of the signs to know what, how many are non conforming I actually heard that three years ago. So three years ago, they could have done a survey. Right? Three years ago and now, they could have done a survey, even if they lose a uh, call intern, whatever, that didn't happen. So I think we should do it and then the select board has discretion. You know, they can work with, uh, they can do something. As a planning board, anyway, we need to do it. We need to not just make an ordinance because you don't know what's, I mean, we'll get rid of the car and the ordinance just because we don't know what's happening. Other comments, questions? Yeah. Yes. Does the board or the select uh, if this section is left in and somebody comes to the 10 year limit, do we have the ability to uh, offer a waiver to that business? No. Okay. So there's stop basically. Okay, thank you. Mr. 
Louis Armstrong is still at 41 Elm Street. Um, I just would like to point out, I mean, I, you know, I can't really say that my heart bleeds for somebody who put up a non-conforming sign. Um, we have it very clear in our ordinance, we've had it for years, that says that our goal and objective is the eventual elimination of non-conforming signs. That's why we put a hard stop in. We don't want that. So I think we should defeat this, and I agree with the comment made by uh, Nancy that there should be a survey, and then if there's a big case to be made for how hard this is going to be, a hardship, we can reconsider it in the future when we work on that. Mr. Moderator, one last. An individual could have had a sign 10 years and one month ago, or one day ago, I believe, and then we wrote them up as non-conforming as the town. Is that correct? That's the way the law works. Correct. If you adopt an ordinance change that makes existing signs non compliant, they become non conforming at that point. If, if my memory serves me correct, the, the issue at the time this was written for the tenure removal, I, I always assumed it was an electronic message sign. But as written, it's every sign that became non conforming to me. So that, that's one of the reasons that I actually support this, because we're not focused on the type of sign that was very controversial at the time this was written. If you keep reading what Liz just mentioned about the eventual culmination of non-conforming signs and the objective of the town, such elimination of non-conforming signs should be brought about over a period of time in such a manner as to avoid the invasion of vested rights of the signs owner and the infliction of unnecessary hardship. Um, that's Part of why we're moving into mandatory removal of any non-conforming sign. I mean, that's why that is that's why this is here. Mm -hmm. I, I apologize again before you stop. Don't go back. Uh, the question has been moved. That's a motion to end debate. It is not debatable, so we can't discuss it. I did hear a second. It needs to pass by a two thirds vote. All of those in favor of moving the question, which means ending the debate, please raise your hand. Those opposed? The motion carries. So I'm sorry, the debate has ended. We'll take a vote on the motion. The motion is to adopt the ordinance changes as set forth in the warrant in Article 12. Is that clear? The, vote, the motion is to adopt the proposed article changes. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? The motion carries, yes, ma'am. Mr. Moderator, I believe you took a motion from a person who did not step to the microphone or announce their name or address. And that's a concern for me. I don't know quite why you did that, so. It is common in debate that when someone moves the question, they often just call it out. That's why we stop and ask, to make sure there's a second. And because we're not allowed to discuss it, it's over very quickly. Oh, I understand I, that. Please, please let me finish, I'll let you finish what you're saying. And because it takes a two thirds vote, it's considered to be a super priority motion if it were something that just barely passed, I would feel a little bit more concerned about it. But it passed by a pretty big number. Uh, a, a number of people have come to the microphone and spoken uh, without waiting for me to ask them. A number of people have not said their name and address, and I try to remind them, but it doesn't always happen. I don't want to be overly formal. Uh, if you would like us to take the vote over again, on the motion to, to call the question and end the debate. No, I'm not, yeah, sir. I'm just concerned about inconsistency. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, uh, we have just gone through a process of looking at a form of government, and I, I think there is a point to be made that we should make sure that who's ever calling the question is a resident of the town and has a voting card. Thank you. To eliminate any concern, Sir, I believe you made the motion to call the question. Am I right? I, you did. I, Please step to the microphone and tell us your name. My name is Ed Cameron, 56 Cameron's Corner. Thank you. Uh, also, a 
or the water also affect the state? No, I apologize. If you're going to move the question, make the motion to move the question. You can, yes, if you can't preface it or otherwise make comments, it's not a motion. Okay. So thank you. For can I make a point of order? I beg your pardon? Point of order, please. Uh, if you're asking, go ahead. Yes, I do believe that it's also in our rules that you're allowed to speak twice to a, a question. Yes, and I can clarify it. that for everybody so that they also understand. You have so much time that you can speak to each time, but this is what yes, I yes, to but that's that's not a point with respect to this question. But, but I have also been overlooking the fact that some people speak more than twice in a given question, and we're trying to let people say what they need to say. But um, now, sir, you move the question, and did you second? You second it. Would you please go to the mic and tell us your name? Gail Kendrick, Nine Apple Grove. Thank you. It is, the question has been called and seconded. As I said before, this is a non-debatable motion. Uh, we'll come back to the main agenda. So the question has been called, which is a, which is a motion to end debate in effect. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise the card. Those opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. Debate on Article 12 has ended. We will vote once again on Article 12. Those in favor, please raise a card. Those opposed. Thank you. Article 12 is adopted. I would like to address again the rule in your town rules about people speaking no more than twice on an issue about the of the assembly. I have been taking the attitude that when someone has something more to say, if we don't get too far afield, it's okay to let them speak. If while that's happening, anyone finds that that is objectionable and wishes to stand up and make an objection, we can then start and request whether the body will let a person speak for a third of the time. We just want to be fair to everyone. Yes, ma'am. Annie Callahan, 45 Atlanta. Um, you are instructing all of us who are here, if you have a question, to please stand. The woman was already standing prior to the vote being the, the motion to move the vote. If there are people standing here, do we not just ignore them because someone went back? Yes. So because she was already present, I'm just yes, I don't want to have a vote be done, but to keep moving forward to my I understand that. Apologize that she would be more specific. To move the question is a priority motion. It can interrupt what else is going on. So even if there are a line of people waiting to speak, moving the question takes priority. And we have to vote upon it. You don't have to pass it. But if the group is ready to end the debate and two thirds of the group say, yes, let's end the debate, that cuts off even people who are standing. Thank you. Article 13. To see if the voters will adopt the ordinance, to adopt an ordinance to amend the top zone zoning ordinance, to amend chapter 225-18, historic overlay district, to remove the public hearing requirement and replace with regular meeting notification requirements. The text of the proposed change appears in the article. Is there a motion to adopt that as presented? I make a motion to adopt that as presented. Thank you. Is it second? Motion is made and seconded to adopt this as presented in the warrant. Are there comments, questions? Yes, sir. Hi again, Rob Lenton, Director of Planning. Um, we're here to propose to the zoning ordinance to remove the requirement to hold a public hearing. Public hearings are an expense to publish in the Times Record. Uh, with, uh, the applic application fees do not cover the expense. The meetings, that, as proposed, are still required to have public notice. Public notice is different from public hearing. Uh, we do not have to publish a $70 ad in the Times Record. It would just simply be 
uh, uh, mailed postcards to residents within 250 feet as notified in our and then agenda is posted on the website, agenda is posted at the town hall and all that. So we're just maybe a matter of semantics, but we're removing the requirement of public hearing for that historic district. Thank you. Are there other comments, questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? We're voting on Article 13. The motion is to adopt the proposed ordinance changes as written in Article 13. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, Article 13 is adopted. Article 14, to see if the voters will adopt the ordinance to amend the Thompson Zoning Ordinance, to amend Chapter 225-17.G.9 Conventional Requirements, Chapter 185-11 Administration, Chapter 185-15 Construction and Subdivisions, to change the term from Office of the Assessor to Addressing Officer. Is there a motion to adopt that change as written? So moved. Second. Second. Is the vote consecutive to make this change as written in Article 14? Comments, yes, sir. Hi again. Uh, this one is a very simple one. Um, I don't I don't this person with the dressing officer. Uh, we found out when the question was that the assessor. Uh, we did not have anybody in the town who was present to do the act. I don't think it's address an officer. It allows the town to have multiple people um, in that title. Uh, it could be fire troop, I believe. It could be town assessor. It could be any number of people. Thank you. Are there other comments or questions? Are we ready to vote? Those in favor of adopting Article 14, please raise your hand. Those opposed. Article 14 is adopted. Article 15. To see if the voters will adopt the ordinance to amend the Thompson Code, to amend Chapter 91, Building Construction, Chapter 115, Electrical Standards, Chapter 124, Fire Prevention, to update these codes to current state standards. Is there a motion to adopt this as a I have a second. Is it second? We move and second to adopt this article as it appears in the warrant. Are there comments or questions? Are we ready to vote? Those in favor of article 15, please raise the five. Those opposed? Article 15 is adopted as presented in the warrant. Article 16, to see if the voters will accept Mountain Road to be named Can Am Drive as a town all the way. And there are some pictures for the table. Is there a motion to move the acceptance of Mountain Road as stated in the warrant? So moved. Is there a second? Move and second to adopt accept the vote as set forth in Article 16. Are there comments? Yeah, I'll make the comment. Uh, planning board recommends I'll pass the road acceptance process through the planning board. Uh, it was a pretty rigorous process that went through the Department of Public Works, who is in support of this in our town peer review every year, uh, conducting the inspection reports and construction. To make sure that the roadway is meeting our standards. Thank you. Yes, sir. All of those 36 William Drive, based on some of the roads that have been accepted recently, that are breaking up now after two or three years, I would move the road commissioner needs to go out and inspect these roads more thoroughly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I know that you said move, and uh, we 
couldn't actually take that. We could not adopt a motion like that, but I take it what you really meant was you strongly suggest that the road commissioner do that. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? And we're ready to vote, I hope. On Article 16, it's been moved and seconded to accept Mountain Road to be renamed as it says in the article. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Article 16 is adopted. Article 17. Well, to see if the voters will authorize the select board to accept on behalf of the town any coronavirus local fiscal recovery plan, also known as American Rescue Plan or ARPA plan received by the town from the federal government, enter into agreements or other documentation required in connection therewith, and appropriate and expend such funds for any eligible ARPA infrastructure project or lost public sector revenue to the extent of the reduction in revenue experienced due to the pandemic as the select board deems in the best interest of the town. These expenditures may be reflected outside of the town's approved budget. Is there a moment, excuse me, is there a moment, excuse me, is there a motion to authorize the select board as set forth in that motion? Oh, it's been moved and seconded. Right. Article 17 has been moved and seconded. Are there comments, questions, concerns? Yes, ma'am. Diane, Minnesota 168, Forsyth. What kind of funds are we talking here and who's going to be in charge of them? The, the select board entirely, or will there be public hearings? How is this going to be taken care of? I guess, thank you. Um, the US Treasury Department uh, started issuing the American Rescue Plan Act funds uh, last year. It wasn't until January of this year where they issued a final regulation governing the use of these funds. Uh, the funds are issued to each of the states uh, and then distributed to the counties and the municipalities. Topsum is being issued uh, approximately $937,000 for the strict guidance and usage of these, uh, these funds. Uh, the two areas which are environmental um, are appropriate uses of these funds, but they're very specific. Uh, one particular area that we're looking at right now is infrastructure, which includes water and sewer, which we have areas of town that we need to address. The funds, however, need to be appropriated by December of 2024 and completely extended by December of 2026 for the final report. Uh, so this allows the, uh, the Board of Selectmen Department to uh, accept the grant, uh, accept the funds and appropriate uh, as guided by the guidelines of the final regulation of the act. Uh, there will be meetings, uh, I'm assuming, when projects are identified that these uh, funds can be spent on, uh, the way we would do any other uh, type of expenditure in town when we go through the select board, uh, potential meetings. Uh, Public hearing, whatever the slip would use. But uh, in short, there's very few things that you can actually spend. So. Yes, ma'am. Um, Liz Armstrong, 49th Street. So, uh, if you were to accept, or are we going to establish a priority of extending water and sewer into parts of the town? And it would not necessarily be the town, it would be those utilities that would be uh, using these funds to do that potentially. Is that correct, Mr. Moderator? Because the town doesn't own those uh, bonds. I can't comment on town ownership or procedure, only what the warrant says. What the warrant proposal in the warrant says would be. The town voters are being asked to authorize the select board to accept such funds as may become available uh, and to appropriately expend them for any eligible infrastructure project. Presumably, the quotation marks are going to define within the terms of those projects. And 
to do it in, as a select board means in the best interest of the town. So I think that's all the answer I can give you from what it says here. If possible, I'd love to have the town manager address whether this the, the board of selectmen has the authority to use funds for a utility, a quasi-municipal utility. Uh, I, I will. Well, I can tell you that what this is, this article is uh, proposing to give such a program. That's correct. So this this um, specific article provides that authorization if the town meeting so desires to give that to give us like local the authority to accept the the, uh, the grant and also to spend it in the way that they see fit. Of course, it has to fit within the, the guidelines and the guidance of the federal government. It's much more specific. You also have a general um, recurring article um, every year that deals with just general gifts, real estate, um, and things like that. But this, because of the way that the grant is working, you need to have the expenditure, you have to have accept funds, and then as written, would, would delegate the expenditure of those funds, appropriation funds, to the select board. That's the way it's written. I'll answer that question. If you don't mind, go ahead. Because I think the question, Relates to water and sewer, not town run. Yes, so we would have the ability to spend those in conjunction with work with the water and sewer districts. And if we were to work on or give or expand any system, those would become part of the water or sewer district. We would we would not have once once the project's done, whether it be a water project or sewer. It would become the ownership of the, of the respective departments. We would just be spending those funds on the. Jeanette, you have two books. I, I'd appreciate clarification on expansions of the sewer system because um, only because a couple of years ago I actually read the plans that the sewer district had in place, and the, ex the only expansion that they had in mind was toward Fort Side Grove uh, Drive and. Somerset, and the planning board approved a project that now putting a whole bunch of houses with septic systems instead of instead of sewer, and that was the only expansion they had in their plan. But did you really need to say an expansion of the sewer system, or did you need like replacing the equipment or some other thing like that? Just appreciate clarification. I think an example was given to him. I will point out that what the proposed ordinance would authorize is for spending money on defined projects as set forth, infrastructure projects or lost public sector revenue projects. Those are the only thing it addresses to the extent the board wants to give you further examples of what they might imagine would come forward. That's okay. I just want to point out what the text actually says that you're voting. Uh, yes, to clarify, I was commenting on the town manager's comments because I didn't understand them. Because I think that the only expansion in the sewer department's plans has been eliminated by the prior approval of a development. And so, possibly, I don't need to take minutes. I just would, would appreciate clarification if you're talking about improving equipment or updating equipment or building new sewer pipes across the river or. What would be the sewer projects? Yeah, and I, I will ask the town manager if he wants to address that, but I want to point out because I think this is a very critical distinction. No matter what his answer is, the proposal on which you're voting would apply to a certain definition of projects. Whether any sewer project would fall within that or not is not something we would know the answer to tonight. No matter what anyone here on the board may have in mind. So you need to bear that in mind when you're reading this article and deciding whether you want to support it or not. I now certainly I understand it and appreciate your comments, but I actually was addressing a comment by the town manager and would greatly appreciate the reply. Yes, ma'am. Yes, the moderator is correct. 
it's the general category these funds can be extended. So well, how I should clarify it is any water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure currently as the as the policy states is is most of those projects are approved. And there's so many different categories within those areas, but uh, that's one area in particular as well as the other one that we'll be moving forward to. Uh, nothing's been defined as what project is uh, money is moving spent on. Uh, to answer that question, we would just say as in which is approved, uh, approved uh, use of funds. Nancy Randolph, working on this slide, I actually stand at the front of the room. I have been coming to town meetings since 1986, and I have never seen a moderator insert himself in the meeting as you have been. So I am complaining about that, and I want you to think about that. The other thing, you have not been kind to our townspeople, and we have always had moderators who have. I'm actually leaving this meeting because I do not like the way you treat our people. Thank you, Neil, for your comment. I certainly have not intended to be unkind. And I try to insert myself only in terms of explaining what's in the ordinance, excuse me, what's in the warrant, because I wouldn't want an impression to get across that somebody, an example that somebody used in this discussing was actually what we were voting on in the law. I try to make that distinction clear. And I hope I have to think if I don't. Yes, ma'am. Diane Burke, 168 Quarterside, and I think you're doing a great job. It's a hard job. Thank you. I would like to say, ask, what happens to these funds if we say no? We have no choice. We have to take the funds, correct? I think that the, I think that the, Article says it's just to give them the, the, the well, that's authority, right? Well, well, no, if I read the article correctly, it begins by authorizing the board to accept right. the funds. So if you don't, if this is not so a we don't get them if we say no. If they don't have the authority to accept the funds, then they don't get to accept the Thanks funds. Thanks for the clarification. Does anyone disagree with my reading of that? Okay. Other questions or concerns or comments? Okay, we're voting on Article 17. Uh, the motion on the floor is to adopt it as presented in the warrant. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Article 17 is adopted as it appears in the warrant. Excuse me one moment. Article 18, to see if the voters will adopt the provisions of five Title V main revised statutes, section 18252-C, public law 2021, chapter 286, as allowed by main PERS rule chapter 803. And the specific provisions for the town to agree to are as set forth in the warrant. The select board recommendation is ought not to pass. Oh, excuse me, I beg your pardon, I've been leery. It's ought to pass, of course. Is there a motion uh, for, to adopt Article 18? Article 18 is ought to pass. Is the motion. Thank you. And the second? Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to adopt Article 18 as presented in the warrant. Comments, yes, sir. Uh, Mark Walsh, Assistant Town Manager of One Road. Road. Um, just a quick reason for this is until last year, when employees were first hired, they had a one-time decision to join the Main State Retirement System or not. Uh, the legislature changed it last year and made any current employee until the beginning of November to make a decision. But uh, for that to happen, the town would have to make this change. They didn't want to make towns have to have special town meetings. 
So they gave permission for the town to act on it for the next regular extended town meeting, which brings us here tonight. So what this passes, any employees who are employees uh, as of last September uh, will be able to have a one-time chance to get back into the system if they want. And any new employees from their first five years after they've been employed will have a chance to join the system. So we get a, basically uh, for the first five years, we get a decision each year. Um, and the, there's a difference between the employee contribution. If you join late, your contributions are after tax. Whereas if you join initially, you first sign up for the board. Are there other questions or comments? Are we ready to vote? The vote is to see if the voters will adopt the provisions as set forth in full in Article 18 and written in the warrant. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Article 18 is done. Article 19, to see if the voters will vote to pay for tax abatements and applicable interest granted during the fiscal year of 2022-2023 from overlay. There's an explanation here which you want to read. Is there a motion to adopt Article 19? So moved. Is it seconded? Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt Article 19. Yes, ma'am. Nancy Chandler, 11 Western Avenue. What is overlay, please? The assessor is coming to the left and you will handle that. Here we go. The assessor is coming to the microphone. Great right behind you. Uh, Justin Hennessy, town assessor. Uh, overlay, when you calculate the tax commitment at the end of the year, uh, when you're dealing with such a large budget, rounding even a penny on the tax rate can create a substantial amount. Overlay allows you to not have to try to round the exact or precise give us a certain amount of funds. This will allow us to actually, during the year, if there's a correction to be made, say you come, we're assessing for 10 acres, you get a survey and you only have nine. You want to issue an abatement in the current year. There's no budget line for that. This will allow us to use those funds from the rounding to fund that without having to take other department funds. Yeah. Um, we're allowed to go up to 5%. We typically do like a half percent. <coughs> Other questions or comments? Are we ready to vote? Those in favor of adopting Article 19 as presented in the warrant, raise a card. Those opposed? Article 19 is adopted as presented in the warrant. Articles 20 through 28 fall into a category sometimes regarded as sort of housekeeping items. And I gather that traditionally uh, the town treats these uh, all together. Uh, is there a motion? I would make a motion that we take articles 20 through 28 with one vote. Is it second? second? It's been moved and seconded to vote on articles 20 through 28 all with one vote. Is there any objection to that procedure? I understand this tradition. If not, we'll do it that way. The motion to debate is seconded. Are there comments or questions about any of these items? If not, are we ready to vote? The vote then is to adopt articles 20 through 28 all in one vote. You understand that? Those in favor, raise your card. Those opposed, Articles 20 through 28 are adopted. Before I take a motion to adjourn, uh, I need to do this before we adjourn. Is there anything I have left out, overlooked, said wrong and needing to correct? Uh, just please do that before we adjourn. Anything? If not, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Those in favor? Opposed? 
We're adjourned. Thank you very much. So sorry.